What if I told you that you could turn your passion for photography into a lucrative part-time job? Ever wonder why some photographers earn top dollars even if their photos are not that great? Well, against what you might think, the key is not shooting amazing photos, but it's all about the strategies you use to find and close paid deals. And in this video, I'm going to share the game-changing tips that help me turn my love for photography into actual cash. And quite fast, I would say. I had a friend that is a graphic designer and at the beginning he was rejecting every single offer for internships from agencies because he wanted a full-time job. But the problem is that he didn't have any past work experiences, he didn't have anything to showcase his talent to these agencies. And therefore they were thinking, okay, maybe it's not worth it, I don't want to pay that much for a beginner. In photography is very similar, if you can't showcase what you've done, your past successes, then it will be much more likely than people will hire you. And think about this not in terms of actual photos, yes, that could be a part, but think about this in terms of confidence as well. Whenever you go on a shoot, there are a million things you need to think about, whether it's lighting, whether it's the rectangle model, whether it's the composition, whether it's your camera settings, your battery, so on and so forth. So it's really, really important to build confidence first by doing either passion projects or even work for free for maybe small shops down the road or anything that comes in your mind that you would like to do in the future as a paid gift but this will allow you to build confidence without having the pressure to actually satisfy the client in case it's a paid job. I started my career doing free things and also passion projects like hiking in the mountains and then putting together the footage to make a video out of it. Then I did one for a gym for free, I did one for a restaurant and other things that I did. And that helped me build my confidence, helped me understand how these things work. And the next time when I was ready to charge clients, I was all in into it and I started getting quite high fees since the beginning. Because the point is also that the more you do these things, the more content you're gonna have to showcase to clients. Every Sunday I share uh, my learnings, experiences and failures in a newsletter. You can sign up just using the link down below, obviously completely free. And the next thing is actually super, super important because whenever you go to a client, if you can showcase them successful cases or amazing photos or videos that you've done in the past, you're already halfway. And that's why it's super, super important to create a showreel or a media kit in case you are a photographer only. Thanks to my showreel, I was able to skyrocket my career in the photo video industry because as I'm going to show you right now, I was able to showcase my skills in less than a minute. And this is super important. A showreel is something that should capture the attention of the client or of anyone that is watching in no time. Because consider that whenever you're working or talking to potential clients, they really have a lot of time to listen to you and watch all the links or references you send them. If you want to catch their attention, you've got to do it fast. Creating a showreel means putting all your best best videos together in a cinematic edit, maybe 45 to 50 seconds maximum. Or if you're just a photographer, just put nine or 10 photos for each category that you shoot in a nice PDF. Take as much time as possible to make the most impressive 45 second showreel, 18, 20 photos in media kit, because this will allow you to land clients faster and with bigger budgets. Because if you think on the mind of the clients, they already know that you can do a great job. And therefore, they don't have that uncertainty factor that will push them to bring down the budget. So if you can showcase best work, your skills in 45 seconds, they will go with a higher budget and they will hire you over someone else that is not able to showcase his or her skills. And this is the 45 seconds video that I used to pitch clients for commercial videography before. <laughs>
enjoyed it. And if you did and you're liking this video, don't forget to leave it a thumbs up and subscribe because it's free, but it helps me a lot. And then whenever you are talking with a client and you want to try to land pay gigs, there's one thing that will make you stand out from the crowd. And this is about creating a mood board. What does it mean creating a mood board? It's basically a plan. So you want to showcase your ideas, you want to showcase your inspiration, what the result could look like, and so on and so forth. Because imagine clients usually, they have an idea of what they would like, but they're not entirely sure. So if you can go to them and propose them ideas with your own spin, maybe showcasing work that has performed well in the past, either on your old channel or someone else's channel, and then you want to propose them, all right, maybe let's do this, and then we mix this one with that one, and then we do this and that, that they'll be extremely happy and they'll go with you over someone else who is just like asking for a bigger budget for no reason without actually proposing a plan. This will tell them that you are invested into the project, that you're putting effort and even before signing any contract. Obviously you want to be careful because there are also some clients that they will ask your ideas, steal the ideas and move away. But the majority of the times is not like this. So don't worry, try to invest and showcase that you put a lot of effort and deep beginning and you'll be awarded. Then once you've created even these mood boards or all these shootings that maybe you've done as a passion project and so on and so forth, remember it's super, super important to showcase your work to the world. Do not be afraid of what other people think about you because I know that maybe you're not using social media as much because you're afraid of other people's judgment. But if I can tell you something is that people really don't care about you. They, we are just selfish people. Uh, everyone is pretty selfish. So don't care, just post whatever you want, showcase to the world because that's how I started. I had passion for videography and I was doing it with no like thinking about business or anything. I just created hiking videos and posted on Facebook and I posted maybe I think four or five and then people started reaching out. So then I received this message. Hey Simon, I saw your videos, they are amazing. I got a restaurant and I wanted to get some content to post on social media. Do you want to help me? Oh yeah, sure. I'll do it for free. Uh, yeah, that's it. So all the free stuff that you do at the beginning, even for passion, just post everything. And then people will see and will start ask. Because consider that when people actually reach out to you without you having reaching out to them, it means that they already saw your quality of work and they already know that it's good enough to be charged and they're ready to pay you. One way that you can use to stand out among the crowd right now and grow on social media is obviously using reels or TikToks in general short videos. Even if you're a photographer, you can integrate your photos into videos, maybe showcasing behind the scenes or things that maybe were interesting during the shoot or just the setup or anything you want. Now, in case you're a bit unfamiliar with this, I have a full class on Skillshare where I talk about everything you need to know about creating short vertical videos and you can access this course and all my other courses completely for free for 30 days just using the link down below in the description. Then obviously if you can get noticed by showcasing your work and maybe someone reaches out to you or you're reaching out to clients then you've got to do something that will make you stand out and you'll get paid way more and you'll land more jobs as well. This is about doing your research about that company, about that brand deal. What did they launch last month? What do they have written in their website? What is their mission? Which other influencer are they working with right now or they've worked with in the past? It's important to understand these things because you can then customize your pitch. That means that the brand will know that this is not a general pitch, but that you invested time to understand about them and then make plans accordingly. This is a huge bonus, so do not overlook it because this will actually make you land clients pretty fast. Because as a creator, you have the power to give opinion. They come to you because you are the creator person so they definitely want your opinion most of the time they're looking for inspiration as well and if you can give it to them they're gonna be very happy they're gonna go with you 100% with the job then whether you're gonna sign the contract or not is super important to build a relationship so we're talking about before the shooting so in the initial emails we're talking about during the shooting if you'll be able to meet them and also afterwards so whenever you be able to communicate with them try to build that relationship because clients usually they go with the same people over and over again so if you can lend retainer clients that's what it's called then you're gonna have a massive advantage so always try to think about the future and build that relationship that will 
help you learn more things in the future. Then while you apply all these concepts, think about also your personal brand. And with personal brand, I mean the way other people perceive you, which means if you're on Instagram, you're a photographer, you're a professional photographer, you want to land clients and get paid doing what you love, I wouldn't suggest you start posting drunk photos on Instagram or pictures when you're with your dog, maybe. I mean, yes, your dog is cute, obviously, but try to have a consistency among what you post, try to keep the level as high as you can, try to have maybe the same colors, whether you're using a logo, whether you're using the profile picture, try to have a professional one there, try to have a good banner if you're on YouTube, try to have a modern website with all the right photos, your media kit, your showreel, so on and so forth. I think personal brand is extremely important because now whenever we talk about brand deals or companies, they want to be associated with personalities. And if you don't have a strong personal brand, you're not a personality. And therefore, it's going to be less likely that they're going to go with you. And once you've landed that job and you've done it, then one thing can actually skyrocket your growth. And this is about over delivering. So try to give more choices to the client so they can choose and they're going to like you because they're like, okay, then I, I can choose and I can align things with my own brand. Because at the end of the day, we do something that is very subjective. A photo that I love might be mm -mm, for you, right? So let them choose, give them more choices and try maybe to upsell it. This will make a lot more money than you think because people, if they see your work, they like your work, they want to get more of it. And if you shot only the five photos that you initially planned and agreed, then you're not going to be able to upsell it. Instead, maybe shoot 15 if you can and if time allows and then give them a discount on the extra temp so that you'll be able to get more money anyway. This is actually one of the strategies that I talk about in this video where I show you how I went from zero to 100k as a student just using my photography. I'll see you here.